Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 103 of Direwolf20's server play series. Uh, today's episode, I'm going to wrap up this crazy design that I've got planned, and boy oh boy, let me tell you guys, it is going to be cool. I've been doing a lot of work off camera, uh, getting the code all ready to run for this program. So there's a couple things I need to install uh, to be ready for everything that I want to have here. Uh, we want to get our kinetic attractor back, we want to get our... Uh, mob thingy there we want to i'm having a little trouble with the villagers i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna come up with a good solution not 100 sure what i'm gonna do but hopefully i can come up with something good uh so let's see i want my corporeal attractor i want to have another wired modem or two and i'm gonna need some more redneck cabling and i mean i just need all kinds of cool stuff because we have some crazy things to make so first let's get our red net and then let's get our modem Probably gonna need a couple more of these, please. That'll do. Uh, and we'll also want the um, peripheral thingy. Another one of those guys. Let me tell you guys, it's gonna be cool. I'm so excited because I have this all working in like a single player test world kind of place. And it is so cool that I can't wait to show it to you. Just trust me. Um, I've definitely been having power problems. My system and this base can no longer run exclusively on steam-based power, as you can see. Um, well, it looks like our steam boiler is heating back up from some point. I don't know what the deal is, but long story short, these guys, you know, we're not cutting it anymore with this power. Um, why are you actually... Well, that might be the problem. That could be why we're having power problems here. I must have turned that off at some point and never noticed. Ha! <laughs> what a noob. All right. Well, at the very least, we've got our destabilized redstone flowing in, and that's probably going into the top there. So there's part of the problem on why this steam dynamo thing wasn't keeping the power going. Now we should have a nice surplus of power, or at least a little bit of a surplus. Well, that fixes that problem. Now let's go down here and set this up. So there's so much I need to set up because I've actually kind of gone a little overboard with this program that I have a lot to do. So let's get started. Uh, first off, I think what I'll do is grab a paste bin of the code that I've been using. Uh, so first off, we're going to need to paste bin get our button API. And that's the button API I've used in 100 different videos by now, so you guys should be somewhat familiar with what it is. Uh, but it's basically like a little bunch of code that I wrote to make making touchscreen monitors a little bit easier for me. It's probably not a very good API, and I don't recommend you using it unless you really know what you're doing. But eh, it works for me, so that's what it is. Uh, let me get my aspect or my uh, code here for my other stuff. I'll be right back. All right, there's the code as it exists right now. And if we run mobs, we're going to find out uh, that we are attempting to index a null value. I have to change this guy. The one thing I have to change in the button API is what side of the computer the monitor is on. Let's run mobs. Now, there's going to be a lot of buttons here that we're not ready to look at yet. Uh, hey, there we go. How's it going? That closed that up. And let's see. Uh, let's fix this up real quick. You know what? I wrote so much code that I'm just not even close to ready for it. So let's get ready by implementing all the stuff that we need to implement before we can move on. So first things first, let's jump out here. Uh, I'm going to sneak out here because I want to actually uh, change up a few things. Let's grab this dude with a wrench and I'm going to put him over here. And this should work, though I was having a little bit of a problem with it in single player. We'll have to see if it fixes itself um, you should still be able to flow into the mob spawner and we'll know that that's working um, if we were to for example throw something in there and turn off the redstone signal that's on it but for now I'm just gonna leave it as is um, do I have a lever on this thing somewhere or is it just coming from here let's remove this hey there we go that's right so this guy should be allowed to run now and I just want to test if we spawn a few mobs we can spawn some bats. That seems pretty safe, right? Just a couple, please. And I just want to test to make sure, and I'm going to set this to no so we don't actually waste too much mob essence, but we're going to make sure that the energy in the mob essence flows back in. Um, all right. Let's take this out for a minute. So mob essence is not flowing back in. I might... So that's the same problem I had with the single player world, is that energy was flowing, but liquid was not. 
So let's get some workaround solution to this going on. Curious if that'll fix it actually. So yeah, it's still being a little bit funny with the mob essence, but I'll see what I can do to fix that. Uh, the reason I needed to do this, by the way, is that um, I need to interact directly with the auto spawner. So let's get that going. We can actually hook up the auto spawner to our computer as well. And hopefully I've got enough uh, stuff here that I can run this thing. If not, I might need to make just a little bit more cable. Let's run this guy down here and you'll see in a minute why I want to interact directly with the spawner so that's one thing let me get a little bit more of this computer craft cabling stuff because I know I'm gonna need it okay the next thing I want to interact with, and I'm going to need it for both redstone and computer craft cable modem, is um, this guy back here. So let's find him. This thing will be around here somewhere. There it is. Cool. So I want to get onto that thing. I do have to break this canvas block, but don't worry, it's not an important one. It just takes a while. So if I can remember how I set this all up, believe me, I spent like hours perfecting this little system. No. Like I said, there's one or two little problems with it, but we'll get it sorted, don't worry. Um, for now, we can have you set to cable only, cable only. Oh, and I did find out a good trick, and I'll show it to you in a minute here. Let's see, get this guy to yellow. And we just want to run this over to, I'll probably just run it straight over to here. There we go. That'll get that going. Now we also want to use our peripheral proxy because this is not a solid block, so we need to use peripheral proxies. And we'll put our modem here and we'll run some cable like this. And it's not a big deal if your you know, cable modem cable stuff connects to the red net cable. It's not like it's gonna actually affect it in any way. But just for appearances sake, you might as well close that off. Now I'm gonna activate you and I'm gonna activate you. And there we go. That should be cool. Now let's see if my program wants to run yet. I may or may not be able to handle this. Let's see what happens. Nope, not yet. Dun da da dun! I've got it going. So here's the program and how it's going to work. I don't have all the components of this built just yet, uh, but we're going to check it out here in a minute. Let's see. Let me get rid of all this stuff because this is just a nuisance. We don't want him here anywhere. Um, so a couple of these buttons should work. I still have a few more things to install, which I want to do with you guys in a minute here. But for example, the lights button, if I toggle the lights, uh, should have worked. Oh, I know why. Haha. <laughs> I broke this one testing earlier. There we go. Cool. Let's reboot the program just to be sure. So on boot up, you'll notice that the drawbridge there closes. That's cool. Lights, turn them off. <laughs> right click again, turn them on. Nice. Same for the drawbridge. Cool. Uh, grinders are on by default, which is why when they started up, they were green, but I can turn them off if I want. Cool, right? Um, let's see, grinders back on. Um, a tractor. Uh, this guy you can see is currently in pulling mode and you'll notice that next to a tractor is a button that says pulling. If I click it, it should switch it to pushing mode and you'll see it's red now and it's switched to pushing mode. That's why we needed the connector, the peripheral proxy on the attractor because uh, the, the corporeal tractor has a couple computer craft programs um, built into it so you can interact with it. And we can turn on and off the attractor uh, by interacting with the yellow. It's not glowing right now, but 
trust me, it's running. It's I'm thinking it's like that weird bug. I think we saw it before too, where it just wasn't doing the particle effects all the time. So switch it back to pulling mode. That works. Uh, spawner we can activate, and we'll see here that spawner is now running, and we can switch spawner off. And then finally, Mob Selector, one of my favorite parts. Uh, it takes a second for this menu to come up because it's scanning all those inventory slots, but you'll see a list of all the uh, mobs that are available for you. It'll tell you down here whether or not there's a current mob in the system if you want to remove the mob so you don't have to, you know, have something in there all the time. And then finally, Exact Mode yes or no. You'll notice exact currently figures out that it's no. That's why we have a computer attachment as a peripheral on the auto spawner. The auto spawner has a way to turn on and off exact mode via computer commands. I just right click on that and like I said it's a little slow on that menu uh, but you'll notice it switched it to exact mode yes. That's the only downside of this program and I'm going to kind of figure out if I can get that a little bit cleaner. The problem is every time I do something on this menu I should check all the inventory slots because I should see if anything has been moved around. Um, but at the same same time, that takes about a second. I think it probably can scan one inventory slot a tick. There's 27 inventory slots there that I'm scanning, so it can scan about a second and a half is about what it takes, a little less than a second and a half. So that's the only downside, but otherwise it's totally controllable. So I can toggle spawn exact copy, yes or no. I can insert, for example, a villager, and when I do that, you'll see that the villager is removed from the list. Haha, <laughs> because current mob, villager. That's uh, another reason we use that peripheral attachment. We're able to look at the inventory slot and just read what's in there at the moment. So if I want, I can click wolf, and it'll be smart enough to pull the villager out, put the wolf in. And we'll note here that, uh, you know, wolf is back in there and villagers over here. Where is it? Enderman villager. There it is. Cool. So, you know, we can easily swap out what mobs we want where. Pretty cool, right? So uh, there we go. We just turned on Enderman. And then, like I said, if you want, you can hit the remove mob button and it'll just pull the uh, thing out of the slot. It'll be empty. Uh, looks like remove mob. I forgot to have it refresh the screen. So if I went back to the main menu here and did mob selector again, should have eight. So there's a little bug I have to fix. So little minor stuff to change here. The only button I haven't shown you so far. Oh, by the way, back at the main menu, current mob none, exact mode, yes or no. Cool, right? So if I uh, went in here and once again asked it for maybe ocelots and went back to the main menu, we'll see uh, current mob. Did it go? Or did I miss the ocelot button? I must have missed it. Mob selector. The, mob, the buttons are a little bit small, so eh. And then uh, main menu here, you'll see current mob ocelot, exact no. Mob selector again, second and a half. Second and a half delay or so. Uh, we'll hit the exact button, yes. Go back to main menu. We'll see exact yes shown on the main menu. Pretty cool, right? So I have complete control of everything that happens in this room, all from this computer display. Ha, that is cool. And if I turn on the spawner, we should start getting ocelots. If we come in here for a second, we'll see. Ocelots are in there. Uh, we'll see that it's not idle, and it should start spitting them out. Come on, ocelots, there you are. <laughs> Turn the spawner off, and away they go. There's also lots loose in my house. Uh, notice um, what's weird, and I don't know why it does it, um, but the, the the spawn egg does list the mob inside as Ozzelot with a Z. So I don't know if that's like the behind the scenes way it's coded. Like maybe they're named behind the scenes as an Ozzelot. But it says Ocelot there, so I don't know what the deal is. Probably similar to the way it says thongcraft.pec. It's probably some kind of naming thing. So uh, the only thing we haven't set up yet that I haven't done for you guys just yet is uh, if we come up here, I want to show you a neat new trick that I discovered. Uh, what I'm going to want, though, first, make sure the lights are on there. We don't need any mobs spawning all through our house. Um, let's run over here and grab... Some drawbridges. I never taught this thing how to make a drawbridge, huh? That's a hassle. Let's see. How likely am I to be able to get drawbridges? Well, how many casts do I have? I could probably pull this off. So I just need some dispensers. I'm gonna need five of these for now. One, two, three, four, five. Dispensers. 
I got a sixth one, I'll live. And uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, so close. We're missing um, some aluminum brass. I think I can melt these casts and get aluminum brass. So why don't I do that and I'll be right back. What do we got in there at the moment? Molten iron? Okay, that's cool. I was making something or other. Alright, uh, let me just get my ingot cast here. These guys should be able to melt down. Yeah, they are. So I'll be back in a minute, and then I'll get those uh, blind casts converted into ingots so I can make one more drawbridge. Or, you know what, instead of doing that, why don't I just start working on this? And clear this all out. I've got plenty to do to get this whole system up and running the way I want it to be. That'll do. Let's go over here and get ourselves... Uh, I want some dark glass. I might have a little bit more of the stuff back there, but I need to... That might be enough for what I want to do. Hopefully, I think I've got some in here somewhere. Thought I had some in there somewhere. You know what? It's probably back at the overworld base. Let's make sure that molten aluminum brass is on the bottom here. So I can get my last two drawbridges. Okay. Gonna have to work on getting more aluminum brass, apparently. Might be cool to set up a whole automation system for all the different types of ingots. That would be kind of neat. That I wouldn't mind doing. All right, we'll see, we'll see, no promises. Uh, real quick trip to the overworld because I'm guessing that I left darkened glass over here and since that stuff, I don't wanna say it's expensive, but you know what? If we've got it here, we might as well get it. Come on, Slowpoke. There we go. Awesome. That should be enough. All right, let's get set up back in the uh, work main new base. And be back in a second. All right, so let's get these guys installed. So basically, we're going to have three each. And that should work out pretty well. And then I found out, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I definitely had issues with this. There it is. If you look really closely, uh, it was something I was struggling with last episode and I showed you guys a workaround. You don't really need that workaround. Uh, if you look real close, you'll see there's a bounding box here. I was trying to get this to show up before and I was unable to find it, but now that I have, it's kind of easier to find. You kind of have to look at where, instead of the side of the cable that you want to click. You actually want to look at the block where the cable would be connecting, and that's how you can turn it on to force connection mode. I'm going to set this guy to lime green, I think. Um, and I want to test this because that's the code that I wrote uh, to handle it with. So lime green. Uh, there we go. Let's reboot. And you'll notice here, why didn't you work? Oh, right, because I don't have mobs running. All right, so the door doesn't work. That's because by default, they won't be in strong connection mode, but you can toggle it to set side to strong connection mode. And you'll notice that now, ah, there we go. We've got the door there. Cool. So I'm going to set that on all of these. So side connection mode is important because it's going to be what's going to allow this thing to transmitted signal from the stone bricks here to the drawbridge that's under it. So that's an important thing. So strong connection mode allowing that to, whoops, don't want to do that. There we go, strong connection mode and lime green. Strong connection mode and lime green. I think there's one more to do. I missed. There we go. If we run over here now, we'll see that our drawbridge door works. So if we hit the door button, ah, that's cool. Ah, 
I'm serious, you guys. I've spent quite a while working on this crazy design. So the fact that it took me like two minutes to do now, believe me, it was like hours worth of coding and preparing and other things. Now, the only problem that I have at this point, so everything's cool, right? Let's um, open the door. Let's fill in this hole. Let's get rid of the torches. Let's turn on F7. I want to make sure we don't have any light leaking in anywhere. So if we turn the lights off, should probably close the door too and then turn the lights out. Oh yeah, look at that. I think that thing down there gives off a small amount of light, but those three blocks, I don't think there's really anything I can do about it. So we're just going to kind of have to leave it as is. Um, oh look, I think the, is the attractor on? The attractor appears to be on. I want to test that and see. Turn it off now. Tractor seems to want to be on regardless. I want to put it in push pushing mode there, and yeah, you can definitely see it's on. So something's giving a redstone signal there when it shouldn't be. Let's go figure out what that might be. Who's applying a redstone signal to you? Ah, there it is. Uh, the white signal was probably on because the lights were off and it was applying to the block underneath the attractor which was interacting and causing a little trouble. There we go. So now you can see the attractor is not on. We turn it on and they get pulled into the back there. That's where my wither skeleton thing is going to be that kills wither skeletons for me. Um, let's put it in pushing mode and you'll see now that when mobs spawn they are pushed over to where the drawbridge is. Now my only problem I said is with um, villagers. We'll note here when, when mobs spawn for example and if I wanted to, I could even um, go into the mob selector. Let's say I want to get some... Let's do peck for now. That sounds like fun, right? And exact no. We'll go back to the main menu. And then we will say spawner on. So the spawner should be running. We should be, you can see I sized this just perfectly for the word Thomcraft Peck. It barely fit otherwise. Um, so they are getting pushed back, right? So they would get pushed back into this whole spot here, but eh, they're, one nuisance would be that they don't always fall into that hole. And I'm trying to figure out a good way to like push them towards that hole. I might go with fans. There's a couple options I'm toying with right now. Um, but also, like, the range at which it pushes is, like, just on the edge. So I might want to push this back one level further and have the drawbridge open a little bit wider. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. Uh, but I'm going to turn the mob spawner off. There it goes. And you can see no more mob spawning. We'll turn the lights back on. We will close the drawbridge, and we'll turn off the attractor. <laughs> That's cool. All right, guys, so what I'm thinking is grab the uh, shovel here. Let's hit the drawbridge. Snag one, two, three more of these guys. And you can each go into here, here, and here. And that will ensure that they will definitely get pushed into the drop there. So if we close the door, hit the drawbridge, uh, turn on the spawner. We should be getting peck here in about 10 seconds. If I really wanted to be crazy, I could throw a little countdown timer on here or something, but that's just getting a little bit overboard. Uh, so pecker here, right? Uh, the attractor is not doing anything. If I wanted to, I could set it to pulling mode even to demonstrate this a little bit. Uh, and we'll turn off the grinders even. See, with grinders off, they won't die. <laughs> You can tell how much fun I had with this build, right? Um, so, oh, right. I'm wondering if uh, we ran out of mob essence. So, yeah, why is mob essence not refilling in there? That's something I need to fix. Let me look at that off camera, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I have to work around this whole issue right here. Um, I really hate having to do this, but I think my only recourse, really, is to fluid duct into the side. I think that's all I can do, honestly. Uh, let's jump into bat mode here. We'll have to, I mean, that, there's no other side I can interact with that will make this any better. So, for now I'll do this, and if I come up with a better workaround, great. If I don't, I don't. And it's just what it is. It is what it is, right? There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, let's see, there is no, unfortunately, cursed earth um, I checked already. 
uh, covers, but there are dirt covers. There's grass block covers too. Maybe I could just use that and see how it works. <laughs> That's funny. I, it's, there's nothing I can do. It is what it is. Uh, if I want this whole system to work, I'm going to look into and see if there's a workaround to this whole... For whatever reason, the, the, the liquids are not going through the transvector interface, and they should. So I'm, I'm going to check with the mod author and see what I can't figure out. But at least for now, the system works. Um, so I wanted to mob selector villager. Now, you know what? I don't want a villager. I want to go with... Uh, Let's just do, I guess we can stick with PEX, that's fine. Exact mode, no. We're gonna turn on the mob spawner and close the door. Oh wait, I hit the remove button, didn't I? Yeah, I had to fix that remove button, don't let me forget. Mob selector, Thomcraft pack, main menu, and then close the door. Turn on the attractor, activate the spawner, grinders are off. <laughs> yeah, you can tell I definitely had fun making this, huh? Uh, when it's all done, by the way, I'll be able to close everything up. And all you'll see is the monitor, which is neat. So you can see right now they're in the attractor mode. I'm going to switch it to pushing mode. And what they should happen is they'll get pushed out like that. That guy, I guess, got stuck, but I'm going to have something there in a minute anyway. So they're pushed away. Uh, if we hit the trap door, drawbridge... They should get pushed into it. Cool. Perfect. So that's what I want to see, is I want to see any mobs that spawn get pushed into there. That's going to be for the villager thing. Like I said, they do still catch on the sides a little bit. I'll figure out a solution to that. For now, drawbridge closed. Grinders on. Spawner off. Attractor off. See you guys later. All right. Um, I think the only other thing I need to build for this is that Tinker's thing underneath, which I'll probably just do off camera or even between this episode and next. Uh, we're going to definitely need uh, some smeltery stuff. Uh, I don't know how much of the seared bricks I have. Not quite enough. So let's get some grout. So we can just get like a stack or two of the stuff and we'll just smelt it all up. And then like I said, between this episode and next, I'll handle the the building of the smelter under there for... And I'm basically going to do the exact same build that I did back at the main base. By the way, I had another idea and I was toying with it. Uh, what I could do is have it in pulling mode instead of pushing. And it would pull all the mobs to this point and I could have the drawbridges over here. But... I don't think that would work, mostly because, like, I need the peripheral proxy here and a couple other things would get in my way. Plus, I wouldn't have a reason to have this awesome pushing and pulling mode, which is so cool. All right, so, uh, yeah, we'll be back in a minute here. So I think for now what I'm going to do is leave the lights out in there, let some mobs spawn, and let the grinders start producing mob essence for me. And if we head down to our mob essence area, we should see that stuff populating. I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with this build so far. Um, we will work towards, if I can, getting that uh, little transvector interface guy to work. But if he doesn't, like I said, it's, it's not really the end of the world. Um, but for now, I think we've reached a pretty good wrapping up point for the episode. So I will... Uh, just toy around with the, the little mob selector program here. Uh, I will off camera get the smeltery built for the villagers so we can continue to collect emeralds as needed. I will fix the code so that when I do a, um, let's see, we probably do it real quick. If we look down here, I want to find the code where I remove, oh yeah, it's a complicated one. Huh? Um, maybe I'll do it off camera. Yeah, I'll fix the code off camera because there's a lot to it. Um, but yeah, I will paste spin this for you guys. Uh, why don't I paste spin it now with the bug? I'll paste spin put mobs and I'll also uh, have startup shell.run mobs. And then uh, now on reboot, it should run. By the way, on reboot, it will automatically turn the lights on and make sure the door is closed and make sure the grinders are on and everything else is off. So that is um, the default mode as soon as it boots up. Um, so keep that in mind if you ever shut down your server, or if you're playing in a single player world, whenever you load up, the lights are going to turn back on and everything else. And that could have obviously be changed in the code. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, pretty much wrapped up with this build. Might have a few more tweaks and changes to it next episode. We'll see what happens. All right, guys. Take it easy.